Thank you for joining me in Ron's basement. We are also joined today by Coin Shop Chris, but we have a question for you. How does it make you feel when you hear that in the 1970s, from the low price of the decade to the high price of the decade, silver went up more than 35 times? Think about that for a minute. And we're going to ask our friend Coin Shop Chris as well, his thoughts on that matter. Coin Shop Chris, welcome back to Ron's Basement. Ryan, we always have, we always seem to do this on a Friday night. I guess we, we're, I guess we're having a date night here. <laughs> it's a date night. Well, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> how about, how about a date night uh, sometime in the future, in the next 10 years, when we can look back and say, boy, silver went up. 10 times in value, silver went up 20, or maybe even like we experienced in the 70s, silver went up more than 35 times in value from its low to its high. What are your What are your thoughts on that, Mr. Chris? Well, you know, I'll be honest with you, I, I really did not check the price, you know, on, in the 1970s. I was born in 1980, Ron. Okay. So, I, mean, I know 1980 was $50 an ounce. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, Chris? I just thought of something. I think you were born on the day that silver hit its all-time high. What do you think of that? I think I was pretty close, right? <laughs> you were like, I got to get out and, and get some of the silver while I still can. Well, that's why you and I have both stackers. We were both born in February, Ron. Yep, yep. You yep. I mean? So, I mean, we have, we're about 10 years apart, so. Yeah, well, and but but I mean, think about it. The 1970s, silver. I mean, gold did well too. Gold was up, I think, more than 25 times from its low to its high during that decade. But if you think, and, and I want to get your opinion on this, and those that are watching, I want them to think about this as well and comment in the comment section below. The 70s were a difficult decade for our country, but aren't we right now in a more difficult situation than we were in the 1970s or am i imagining things no the dollar has gone weaker on um you know everything's costing you know 10 times 20 times for, you know depending what you're getting you're gonna get ron um mm -hmm. the dollars the dollar's dead i mean yep. you know it is, the dollar is what lost 97 percent of its value yep so, I mean, you know, that's, you know, that, you know, that's just why I don't keep a lot of money in the bank, Ron. You, you, you know, I, I just, you know, you, we talked about this for weeks on end. You know, I, I read a stack of silver and put it away in the safe in multiple locations. You feel better having your money in silver than you do in cash. And I think a lot of the people who are joining us right now share that same sentiment. But, you know, when we, when we talk about, and I, I'm, I'll stop, I'll drop this 1970s thing. I just want to say one more thing, Chris, because uh, I know you probably want to talk about ding-dongs or something like that. But well, nonetheless, go. <laughs> nonetheless, nonetheless, I think the important thing for all of us to remember is, you know, the country's in much worse financial condition than we were in the 1970s. Geopolitically, the world is changing more now than it was in the 1970s. All, politically, the country's in a, in a much a much more uh, contentious state than it was. I mean, I, potentially, you know, when you look at the factors that drove up silver during that decade, sure, the Hunt brothers had something to do with it. But even if you take them out of the equation, you know, the, the potential now for spectacular returns, when you look at the factors that are, you know, the confluence of factors coming together, I think, uh, you know, I think the, 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 the soil is more fertile now than it was in the 1970s. But that's just, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. Don't make any financial decisions based upon that. Um, I just wanted to share that idea because I think that's critical with our viewers right now. Yes, but when you say returns, well, what are you going to return it for? You want you want to take your server and return it for cash? As I sure heck don't. No, I mean, no. You know, it, it depends how everybody's mindset is. You know, you know, I hear it in the shop. I hear it in the comments. You, you know, I I'm going to sell everything at fifty five, sixty dollars in in ounce. Why? What? Why you? Why you want to go back in cash for? Yeah, you want to go. You want to get some more some paper. You know that that I can rip in forty five pieces, Ron. I mean, you, you know, I mean, it. You know, I mean, like I said, if if someone's God forbid, someone's house caught on fire, 
and you had a stack of cash, it's gone. You have a mm -hmm. stack of silver, gold, or pl platinum. It might be out of form, but you still have that silver, gold, and platinum because you can't destroy it. Yep, yep. You still, you still have the metal. And you and I talk about that all the time. You're not, you know, you're not buying or selling uh, with silver, gold. You're converting. And if you convert uh, metal into cash, uh, into paper, you know, at a certain price per se, you're really running the risk. I mean, if silver really does skyrocket, uh, most likely, you know, it's not like the dollar is suddenly going to reverse course and and over a long period of time become more valuable. If you're going to convert, think about converting it into other real things like real estate or, you know, uh, oil or, or oil leases or something that's real and tangible, not paper <laughs> and not digital either. It would be my recommendation, but, you know, that's just my just my thought. If you're looking to buy gold, silver, or platinum, do yourself a favor and check out Pimbex, the online precious metals bullion dealer and sponsor of Ron's Basement. I was a happy customer before they offered to support the channel. You'll find they have the best prices, quality, and service. I think Pimbex is best, and you will too. And be sure to tell them that you're from Ron's Basement. I'm right there with you, Ron, but while we're on this... Um... You know, not to say the subject, if everybody can give this a like, share it, and subscribe, the likes really help. Yeah. You know, it gets the words out to everybody. You know, YouTube really pushes it out. They see more likes. YouTube pushes this, these videos out. Yeah. And we, give it a you know, thumbs up. It's it's free. See my thumb? Hold on. I'm going to show everybody. Press the thumbs up button, please. It helps. It's free. And I just have I just have one question for, for you, Ron. I'm sure you, we got a couple more things to talk about tonight. But mm -hmm. how how did this ding dong talk? You know, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you were sitting. You know, we were doing a video, and you say you like to eat ding dongs. I did. And yeah. my and my reply back to you was, "You are what you eat." I don't. So see, I don't. Re I, don't rem I don't remember it going down that way, Chris. Well, I would have. I would just ask everybody to go back to that one video a few weeks back ago, and maybe you would like to just rewatch it, Ron. And somehow this whole whole talk got turned on. This whole conversation got turned on me now that I eat five, ten ding dongs a day, which is fine because I'm the biggest ding dong around. So I will I'll take the joke. Yeah, the ding ding dongs are the official food of Ron's basement, and uh, so yeah, no, we we have fun, and uh, you know, you know, whether or not Chris wants to admit that he eats five ding dongs a day, that's uh that's up that's up to him. Uh, what do you think about the uh, Jerome Powell Jackson Hole situation? He gave a big speech today, Jerome Powell, you know, with a big powwow with his fellow central bankers. And he was kind of hawkish. He kind of said, well, we'll raise rates if we have to. Uh, what, what any 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 just general thoughts on on where the Fed may be right now? I mean, it has a big impact on the price of silver and gold. You know, every time I think they're going to pause again, Ron, they raise rates. So um, flip, flip a coin and hope and hope you get it right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's all I got to say on that one, because, I mean, we, they keep raising rates. These businesses look, look at Rite Aid. They just announced they're going bank, bankrupt, too. You mm -hmm. know, they've been in the hole for many, many years. But now yeah. they have officially announced bankruptcy. Businesses yeah. cannot keep affording well, these rate hikes. And I and I know that you were never. I know you've told me you've never really. You've never been a big fan of uh, Rite Aid, anyway. Well, when I lived up north, I loved Rite Aid. Oh, you did. Okay, okay. I mean, you know, they were cheaper than CVS, Wal just Walgreens, but it was always dead. Now, when you say um, cheaper, do you mean? And I promise, this is the last time I'll bring this up during this interview. Cheaper on Ding Dongs. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, I I have bought ding dongs from Rite Aid. Yes. Okay. No more ding dong talk. Mm -hmm. Rite Aid bankruptcy, uh, yellow trucking bankruptcy. Everywhere we look, trouble, trouble, trouble. And Powell's trying to tell us that the economy's strong, and that and that's the general consensus that oh that we need to see more slowing in the economy, because that's the way that they think they're going to fight inflation. And you know. <laughs> 
here's what I think. You can I can I share with you, Chris, what I think, and maybe I, you know a few of the viewers might want to hear this as well. Absolutely. I think it's come to the. It's it's always been a smoke and mirrors trick. We've covered extensively how what the Fed has said in the past, and then what they wind up doing six months or 18 months later is, is oftentimes completely different. But I think it's almost become this cat and mouse game. I mean, you can say smoke and mirrors, but it's almost like a cat and mouse game now with the market and with, uh, with inflation and their supposed fight on inflation. And do they really want to fight inflation? Because mathematically, if they really do fight inflation, the system would likely implode. So there's like this little cat and mouse game. And here's what I think. I think gold is figuring out, figuring it out. And I've, I've heard some other people allude to this maybe in different terms. But the fact that 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 interest rates have gone up so much and they've really gone up to 10 years at I think, what, 4.25 right now. You know, gold should, if it had had a traditional reaction, actually should be much lower than where it is right now. Gold really could we could be sitting at like high 1700s, but I think gold and silver have figured it out. The kind of cat and mouse game that's going on. And, and you know, I think there's a good chance that as we move into the next six months, even if interest rates do go up a little bit more, the market's figured it out that they're not really going to get ahead of inflation. And if they do, it's going to cause so much havoc in the economy that they're going to have to to pivot and and uh, institute some you know monetary loosening, which would also ignite the price of silver and gold. Well, I my reply to that, Ron, is why would anybody want to lock their cash up at four point three zero or four point five five for three two years, five years, whatever the rate is, when inflation is really at you, you know we we all go to the supermarket. We all see the price of the supermarket. They they've not just gone up four or five percent. They gone up what ten, fifteen, some items up to fifty percent. Yeah, it's a joke. It it's a joke. Yes, yeah. you know you're not going to make inches off of holding silver and gold at home. That's not what it's there for. Silver and gold was there. It's you. We have to act like it, it's an insurance in case something does happen. It protects you. That's the way I look at it. Some people think it's an investment. That's the wrong. If you want an investment, go buy stocks. That's an investment. Silver and gold, as Lynette Zane says to you, has you've had her on a couple weeks ago. She says it's it is insurance, and exactly mm -hmm. that's what it is. Yeah, um, it is. But I also want to throw in, and you and a, you and I may not agree on this one hundred percent, and that's okay because. Uh, you know, it's good that people disagree, but I also say that there's a a reasonable, reasonably decent chance that it could also uh, provide uh, an opportunity for some wealth growth. Wealth protection, in my mind, is the base uh, function of the metals, but there's a reasonably good chance as well that you could see some relative and, you know, in terms of relative value that you could see some real growth potential as well. Absolutely. You know, I mean, why do we have, you know, all these credit cards? We have the silver card. We have the gold card. We've got the platinum card. Vehicle manufacturers coming out with their platinum trucks, the best platinum gold. I mean, this version, this version, I mean, silver, gold, platinum versions, Ron. Yeah. It's right yeah. smack in our face, and and most people are, are not paying any attention to this. It's yeah. right in front of us. You yeah. know, your gold card, your platinum card, your silver card. Yeah. Um, yeah, now you can buy a Ford truck, the platinum edition, the best one they have out on the market. You know, if if you like Ford, you know, I'm not a Ford guy, but you, you know, but um, you know, a lot of these vehicles, and and you. Don't, it don't matter what you're buying. You're buying an appliance. I've seen gold editions. I've seen platinum editions on yeah. major appliances. Yeah. I mean, that's been going on for the past 20 years, Ron. I mean, there's, there's something there. Yeah. And it's, a, it, it, it's always been kind of ingrained in our society, but uh, people, for some reason, from an investment, investing or financial planning perspective, 
at least in the United States, kind of ignore the precious metals, which is okay because when they wake up, you know, it's just going to take a few of them and it's going to be a mad rush of new money coming into the sector. Chris, what about the weekly numbers? You always do this work for for the people that are watching. Can you get us, a, is it monthly? I'm sorry, 30-day numbers that you have yeah, for us? I just want to touch on one point you you made before we get into that. Was it a brilliant uh, point that I made? or just a Well, you said the financial advisors don't look at, and you know what? You know why the financial advisors don't want to look at silver, gold, or platinum? They don't make no money. They can't hold it themselves. Yeah. That's why. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't want it, you know, because they, they want all the money in, in-house in their hands. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean. Well, they don't That's get a recurring. They don't get a recurring commission by putting people into silver or gold, well, uh, like they do if they put them into a mutual fund or something like that, where they get Absolutely. a little sliver of commission every year for as long as the people keep their money in the mutual fund. Yeah. Okay, Chris, did you put together the thirty-day numbers we can look at for silver and gold? Absolutely, Ron. I do this every week for everybody. Let's so, hear. Them. Yeah. Silver the, for the past 30 days. Now we're on August 25th, 2023. So everybody knows the date, the time frame I'm talking about. And everything for the past 30 days now. Silver was down 59 cents or 2.38 percent. Ron, you know, last week we did this. Silver was down 9.99 percent. We made a comeback this week. I'm very happy to see that. We're still down a little bit. I'm not complaining. Gold was down $23.80 or 1.21%. Platinum was down $28.40 or 2.91%. And our friend Bitcoin, for the ones who love Bitcoin in this channel, you guys were down $3,161.38 or 10.82%. Wow. Numbers numbers don't lie. I mean... Yeah, Bitcoin's Bitcoin's taking a bit of bit of a drubbing. I think it was this week. I know one day it was down like ten percent when I looked at it. That's interesting what you bring up about silver. Yeah, we were just last week down nine point nine nine percent. And silver, interestingly, the silver to gold ratio. I didn't. I checked it this morning. Uh, we were at eighty five to one just like a week ago. And when I checked this morning, when I did the calculation, we were below eighty. It had dropped from taking 85 ounces of silver to get one ounce of gold all the way down to like 79.5 ounces of silver to get an ounce of gold. It's interesting that silver is performing uh, so magnificently, especially over the last week, and gold just kind of hovered where it is. Well, keep in mind, too, silver's really come back to where it was. So we're not really gain anything. I mean, so I'm... You know, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, I am still looking once I think when silver gets past 2650 run, I think we're going to see some runs up. Mm -hmm. You know, I really think so. And, you know, if anybody really wants to learn more about platinum, I'm not the guy for it. Neil Han Dynasty, who's on, that's his channel name. And he asked me to ask everybody, go to his channel and, and underneath Neil's world, because he's a little crazy himself at times. That's where he talks about platinum specifically about platinum and some geo political events that's been happening. You know, he's the guy to talk. He's the platinum guru to talk to. He's the platinum guru, Neil Han dynasty, the platinum guru. And there's a, there's a strong thesis that uh, underpins uh, the, uh, the, the, the story in terms of why you might want to consider platinum. Um, it's a it's an interesting scenario that could unfold in the platinum market. Chris, is there anything we missed before we uh, before yeah, we say goodbye? More, a couple more things. I just want to give a shout out a shout out to the female stackers. You know, I'm seeing more and more of females, you know, we say this every week, Ron, but it's it's really the truth. I'm seeing more and more come in in every single week. And you you know the females really want to learn. And so, you know, if anybody, it don't matter if you're male or female, if you guys, if you, anybody has a coin you want me to try to help you out with, email it to Ron. Ron will send it to me. I'm willing to help anybody. Just give me a couple of days to get back to you. By the time Ron gets it and I get it, Ron may need a day or so to look at that email. But, you know, Ron's pretty quick. 
So I'm not as quick as Ron when it comes to checking my emails all the time. And let's give a shout out to your sponsor on PIM, this PIMBACS. You know, they have great prices. I, I look at them every single day and they're so competitive, Ron. Um, you know, 100%, you know, love the company. Myself, I have not yet bought from them yet. Um, not because I dislike them. I just not needed anything from them that they had available yet. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, yeah, very good company. Um, I, I like the website. Um, I've here, there's a lot of good comments you guys have provided back. You were very happy with them. That is great to hear. That's what Pinback yeah. wants to hear. That's how I heard about Pinbacks was from somebody in the Ron's basement community. Uh, and then I bought some silver from them myself. This was months ago. And I was very happy. I, you know, it was the best price. And I mean, the service was outstanding. And I checked their reputation and uh, background and all that. And, uh, uh, you know, so I was, yeah, I was, I was a customer before they, uh, before they sponsored Ron's basement and uh, yeah, they're, they're good people and uh, great reputation. So yep. Check them out. And let me give you, a, give you a shout out, Ron, you know, you mm -hmm. have done this yep. for a year and a half, a little over a year and a half. You have kept your word. You will never take a sponsor that you were not comfortable with, or you have dealings with this be before you have been out front, what stocks you have owned. You have yeah. been up front on everything. There's not too many YouTubers as honest as you. Well, so I, I have yeah, been. You, Ron. This no, is why I come back. Let me just, this is why okay. I come back to you, Ron, every single week. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wanted to try to find a channel that's been honest. And you're the honest guy on YouTube, Ron. And people should appreciate that and applaud you and give you a, a thumbs up for for that. <laughs> a thumbs up, right? A thumbs up. Well, Chris, that means the world to me that you say that. Um, it, you know, it 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 really does. It's been great doing this. Um, I think the best part are the people that I've met, including you. You know, I met you about a year ago, and um, uh, you know, I'll save your shout out for a different a different episode. But you know, you do a tremendous amount, including up to and including doing this. And, you know, you aren't trying to sell anything and you have, and I can tell you guys, Chris has helped a countless numbers of people that have sent me questions specific to coins in terms of helping them, giving advice. And, you know, none of us, no, nobody's the ultimate expert, but, you know, some of us know more about certain things. And Chris knows a lot more about the, uh, about the bullion side and about the, uh, especially the numismatics, you know, components and, and things like that. So thank you as well, Chris. Well, just one thing. I'm not, I'm not up on numismatics. My, I, I, I don't like the word expert, Ron, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's fine. I thank you for saying that, but you know, nobody's an expert in this field because we're all learning and, you know, my cup of tea, my more knowledge is, is on the silver side. So that I'm just trying to be transparent as possible. Yes, I know a bit about gold. I know very little about platinum. Neil's the guy to talk to about the platinum again. That's right. So, yeah, yeah, that's you know. right. Well, so I thank you, Ron, for everything you've done. You've you've helped many many people yourself. And so so before we get kicked off the, I think we should wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been it's been great, Chris, and uh, it's been a great journey so far. And we'll you know we'll keep it going you know one day at a time. Nobody's an expert, but all of us, including the people that are still watching right now, we're all kind of in this together. And some some of us you know some of us are able to shine our flashlights in one direction, some in another, and you know hopefully you know we we stick together and uh, are willing to learn from each other. You know, as we hit some potential turbulent times in the future, uh, which seems inevitable, you know, we can we can uh, kind of ride out the storms as they come. Absolutely. And this is, you know, we are all in the comments together. So if somebody sees a comment that you can help them out, let's rep let's help each other out. That is yeah. this is why we're doing this. We're here to help each other out. And please just real quick, Ron, no links in the in the comment section, please. Let's not argue with each other in the comment section. I'm seeing a little bit of that happening. Please, you know, we, we're all adults here. No name calling. 
And um, that's I will leave it as that, Ron, this week. Sounds good, Chris. Thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you next time. I'll see you next week, Ron. Same time, same old bad place in the basement. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.